I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. I'm an absolutely massive fan of teaching maths through story. I think it's a really lovely way to engage children in, into maths. I think it's great for revision and consolidation, but also a really good way of introducing a new topic. And there are so many amazing maths books out there. So I've already got a playlist called I Love Maths Through Story on this YouTube channel. So please check it out if you haven't already. Uh, but today what I'm going to do is literally just show you 10 lovely maths books that I've got that are suitable for children. Age ranges, I'd say three to seven. There's obviously a bit of flexibility around that. I've got so many books on my shelf and I keep getting asked by parents and teachers about books I'd recommend to support some maths teaching. So I thought the quickest way to do it would be to just share them with you. So I've got more than 10. So this video is going to cover 10 books and I'm going to work on my next video, which will be 10 lovely maths books to use for Key Stage 2. I hope you find it useful. Just before I go through 10 books from my bookshelf, I just have to highlight uh, two books to you that I've already looked at before. So this is an absolutely amazing book. Uh, by Steve Light, Have You Seen My Dragon, really suitable um, for children in early years and key stage one, and is a lovely counting book. And I've already done a video about this with loads of ideas that you can take from it in the classroom or at home. So check out that on uh, my I Love Math Stories playlist. And the other one is Equal Schmequal. So Equal Schmequal, once again, is really suitable, I think, for perhaps uh, six, seven-year-olds. Uh, it really explores the idea of equality through some animals in a park. It's absolutely fantastic. And I've also made a video about this one with suggesting loads of activities that you could do in the classroom based on this book or at home. So those two have to be included if I'm talking about Math Through Story. <laughs> So this is the first book I would like to show you from my bookshelf. It's called My Granny Went to Market. Now, I'm only going to be able to show it to you very quickly, otherwise this video will go on forever. Um, but it's a fantastic counting rhyme book and a story about a granny who goes to the market and buys a flying carpet and then explores the world. So it's absolutely lovely. Uh, it's really multicultural. She visits lots of different places, lots of language, amazing illustrations. And on each journey, she buys one more of something. So. You can see here that she bought three fierce and funny masks. So next she goes off to China to buy four lanterns. And the story continues like this. So it's got a really lovely story attached to it. You can draw lots of conversation with the children. Um, I work in an academy trust in Enfield and the reception teachers have just done an amazing job of teaching this book through literacy and maths. And I got the chance to see children doing lots of maths around this and talking to me about the four lanterns or the six booming drums. Um, so really recommend this, um, really multicultural, gives children a sense of the world um, and just an interesting, exciting counting book. Book number two is One Fox, which is a counting book thriller by Kate Reed. So this is all about a fox, a sly fox. Well, actually a famished fox, as you'll see on the first page. One famished fox who goes out and tries to find something to eat. And what's nice about this book is you've got a big numeral that the children can recognise. You've got the word as well. And we've also got the ability to help children count from the pictures. So it's beautifully illustrated and counts up to 10, describing different parts of the animal, for example, like the padding paws here and the five snug eggs. Anyway, this sounds like it's going to be a horrible story, but I am glad to tell you it isn't. Um, seven knocks at the door. And eight beady eyes later, the hens realise that something's going on and they all gather together, all 100 of them, and they actually scare the fox away. So a really nice book with a bit of excitement in it and a twist at the end, because um, it's not quite what you think. Loads of counting opportunities and really beautiful illustrations.
Book number three is this fantastic book called Fruits by Valerie Bloom and David Axtell. Uh, this was recommended to me by a teacher friend called Yasmin, so thank you for that. It's absolutely lovely. It's a Caribbean counting poem, and what's wonderful about that is it's got lots of dialect in it, and I think that's so interesting for children, especially if they've got Caribbean heritage. Um, so it's a great book to have in the classroom really great to go alongside any perhaps literacy work you're doing or um, geography work you're doing about foods from around the world things like that so it fits in beautifully and um, but because it's a counting book I've suggesting it for children between ages three to seven so the story takes you through two sisters in their local community uh, spotting all these different fruits and sometimes picking it sometimes hiding it and sometimes nibbling on it. And each time as we turn the page, the, we get one more in the counting pattern. So we've got three there and four there. So really beautiful book to share with the children, quite mischievous, um, beautiful illustrations, lots of countable items. It's a lovely one. Book number four is Counting Creatures by Julia Donaldson and Sharon King Chai. This book is absolutely stunning. It's delicate. It's so beautifully painted and illustrated. It's got flaps in it to lift up. I absolutely love it. And because it's called Counting Creatures, the focus is looking at the animals and their children. So it's a really beautiful book to share. So starting off with a bat, who has more babies than that? And as you can see, you can lift up and it says one baby holding on tight as they fly through the night. And as you turn the pages, we talk about other animals. And on each page is a liftable flap. We've got countable children. We've got the numeral, the mark we make on paper. And we've got a more question, which is always really helpful because it's a difficult idea for children to understand. But look at it, it's absolutely stunning. So if you're looking at animals as a topic in school, if your children have a particular interest in it, this would be an absolutely lovely book to, to look at with your class. I think you'd have to be quite careful with it. <laughs> um, but it's an absolute stunner and a great link to maths. And you could draw lots of ideas from this to support the teaching of maths in the classroom. It goes on and on. I don't want to stop with it, but there's pages and pages and pages. And for to save you a bit of time, I think you've got a feel for it. But isn't it beautiful? Book number five is Ten of Black Dots by Donald Cruz. Now, this is a lovely book which looks at numbers up to ten and actually quite different from the ones I've shown you. So the illustrations are quite simple, um, kind of like remind me of a 70s vibe, actually. But the idea with this book is that you have black dots that you can turn into things. So two dots can make the eyes of a fox or the eyes of a key that open locks. And any book that's like this instantly means this is an activity you can lift and do with the children. So work really well with having lots of black dots in the classroom and seeing what children can make up um, with their black dots and labeling it and writing the number and writing it in words and comparing it to their partner. So great for fine motor skills, skills by the way. So I definitely pull that activity out. So absolutely loads to do, loads to count, loads more to count if you want to. But a really simple maths book that you could pull lots of ideas. And look, we've got some doubling going on here. So you could draw that out too. So really lovely book. About 10 black dots. Book number six, 10 Seeds by Ruth Brown. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeously illustrated book. Uh, it's also about 10, but this time it's counting back from 10, whereas some of the others have been counting up from 10. So this book tells the story of planting some seeds and then nature getting involved. And slowly, each time one gets eaten, damaged, broken, and we count back 
one more each time. So we've got the word, we've got the countable seeds, we've got the pigeon taking one away. So it's a really nice uh, life, real life example of counting back. And what might happen if we do plant some seeds? Lots to talk about in all the pictures. You could grow your own seeds in, in class or at home and talk about what happens. Perhaps we'll maybe not water one of them and that would be some taking away. Got a cat coming along and causing trouble. But what's really nice at the end of this book is how it goes all the way around. The life cycle comes through. So the green fly eat the bugs and then we get Finally, after all that, we do get one flower from our 10 seeds and then the cycle starts all over again. So a really nice uh, maths book to do if you're doing anything about growing or anything like that in your class or at home. Really lovely. Right, book number seven is None the Number. And this is a counting adventure by Oliver Jeffries. And Oliver Jeffries is a really popular um, author and illustrator. So this is a really lovely book which explores the idea of none which is really important because this is an idea that some children find a little bit hard to get their head around. So it's the Hueys and they're investigating what Nun looks like and start talking about Nun in comparison to One. And then we add some more each time. So there's loads of counting opportunities. We've got the numerals, the mark we make on paper. We've got the words. Um, these pictures, as soon as I see them, I think, oh, I can draw some maths out of that. So if we're talking about how many sleeps you have until a big day, you could start doing that kind of activity with your child or with your class. So whenever I'm looking at a book, I think, what could I lift from that that the children could relate to? So chairs, chairs in the classroom, things like that. So lots of humour, as you'd expect. So Kevin throwing tantrums. Um, seven oranges that were balanced i love that eight party guests trying to guess the gift so it's got quite an interesting context because you can lift that idea can't you straight into a conversation with your child or the children at home so a really lovely book that goes through the counting numbers and then talks about taking them all away and finally ending up with none Book number eight is Eggs and Legs by Michael Dahl and illustrated by Todd Uren. And this is a really popular book with children, I find. I think they find it quite funny, the idea of eggs having legs. So I think they like this one. This is, this is definitely worth getting. So this is a counting by twos book. Uh, it lends itself beautifully because the eggs have two legs, so it makes it all very countable. And the point about this book is Mrs. Hen uh, wakes up to find no eggs in the nest and they've all gone out up to mischief so the children quite like the humor in the story when the hen is looking for the eggs and they're hiding in the corn and chasing the dog they seem to find that one quite funny and as you've noticed there's lots of counting opportunities there's a representation of counting in twos so it encourages children not to count in ones we've got the uh, word and on each page there is also a hidden number so that's number six there so there's plenty to do in this book if you use it in your class or at home with your child so it goes through getting themselves in trouble and then finally ends when we get to 20 so it goes right up to 20 with the representations and they're all back in the nest. What a relief. <laughs> so another lovely book. Book number nine, The Great Pet Sale. And this has been around quite a while. So it's a lovely little story of a boy who goes to a pet shop and it's for sale and everything has got to go. And in the window is a rat. Here he is and he's going for one pea. And he thinks he's a bargain. And it's a really cute story about how this rat follows the little boy all around the shop, trying to convince him to buy him. So we meet lots of different animals. So great if you're doing any work on um, animals or nature. Um, lots of little flaps to pull back. Um, and lots of addition opportunities, adding the totals, fi finding out which animal costs more and which costs fewer. 
it's a really nice book. The only thing I'm not that keen on is the pet shop idea, um, but you know, that's different for everybody. I prefer to, it was based in the RSPCA or something like that. Um, but children do really like it and they like finding the animals and making the values with coins. And actually the, the, the um, rat does win out in the end because actually the little boy buys them all. So he counted his money and he had one pound. And that was everything else in the shop. So book number 10 is 12 Ways to Get 11 by Eve Merriam and Bernie Carlin. It's an absolute corker. It looks at different ways to total 11. So it fits in really beautifully with sort of year one, year two, uh, finding different ways to make numbers. Absolutely fantastic. I love the illustrations. Again, I think these are really 70s. Plenty of countable items. So nine pine cones and two acorns. So you can do lots of representing from this book. You could get pine, pine cones and acorns out and children could find other ways to make 11. And this is what it does. Each page is a different way to make 11. So six peanut shells, five pieces of popcorn. Absolutely beautiful illustrations, really eye-catching. Lots of language. Lots of writing out the calculation. I, as soon as I see that, I think, oh, I'd love, I'd definitely bring some magician's hats into the class and get children to pull different things out and do the calculations. I think they'd absolutely love that. A little bit of mapping and geography there. So absolutely fantastic. Make your own boat. This is what I think when I see this. <laughs> so I find that these kind of books, again, a bit like Have You Seen My Dragon, which I've written a video about already, they lend themselves to loads of different activities. So sometimes I just pick the idea. So I might just pick, it's going to be about mail. It's going to be about post. So from that, then I might set up an area that was all about going to the post office that linked with that. And we could do lots of maths through that. Even some triples. So a really lovely book, 12 ways to get 11. So that's it for my first video, 10 math story picture books from my shelf that I recommend for children in the ages between three and seven. I really hope you found it useful. Please like and subscribe to my page and let me know if you use any and how it went. Thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.